All right, it is time for a sandpaper showdown to end all showdowns. We tested 19 brands. We've got nine brands of mesh. We've got 10 brands of film backed paper. There was a standout. It was incredible. We tested on an industrial robot at our friends ATI Industrial Automation who make the tooling for these robots and they have an amazing random orbital sander that is capable of putting the exact same amount of pressure over and over and over again. So we were able to run the exact same test on each sandpaper. We did five minute intervals for 25 minutes and we came out with some real winners and some real losers. So we're gonna get to into the test here, but I wanna thank ATI for hosting us this week. They have no financial affiliation with this video, but they were very nice in having us and letting us use and abuse their research and development department. Thanks guys. So let's get into the test and let's talk about sandpaper in general. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the test. And again, all this data will be published on my website, as well as a link down to the winners in the pinned comment. So if you wanna read the data yourself, you can go ahead and do that. So the test was set up, we used red oak, which is about a 1300 on the Jenka scale, I believe it's 1290. Every sandpaper we tested was a five inch disc and it was 120 gray. This test took us four full days to complete. So we didn't shoot footage of the entire four days, but we have shots of all these just sort of show we did the test. We used exactly 10.78 pounds and that was the beauty and this is why we flew out to North Carolina to ATI was because they invented this sander that is capable of putting the exact same amount of pressure. Last time I did this test I learned a couple things. People will find ways to pick holes in any scientific test you do and one of the big ones was companies saying it wasn't fair because we could have altered the pressure you know whatever. So this is a way that there is no question that this is a fair test. The other thing I learned is that if you don't say all the ones you did, but you write them down, people aren't gonna read it. So we're gonna go through every single one. We're gonna do it quickly so as not to waste your time. We're gonna start at the bottom, we're gonna end at the top, and then we're gonna talk about the data and why I think it came out the way it did. Like I said in the intro, there is a newcomer that whooped everybody. I mean, reinventing the sandpaper game kind of whooped everybody. It's un. Real. So one of the things that has happened in the last couple of years in the sandpaper industry is there's been some massive changes. A company called Merca, I'm sure you've heard of them, they held the patent on the mesh disc for quite some time, but that expired a couple of years ago. That's allowed companies to experiment. Some of them have changed their formulas since our last test because ceramic has started to become a big part of the sandpaper industry. It's a new thing that 3M just released in their Cubitron for woodworking. They've been having it in their metalworking sandpaper for a long time, but people have learned that it is better for wood. So there's some changes in this test from our last one. Some people reformulated, but I think you'll be really blown away by the winner and the results. So what do we test for? We are testing for friability. Friability is what happens to sandpaper as it deteriorates so that it continues to cut. There were a couple in this test that had no friability. Like it got through one of the five minute intervals and then died and would not cut anymore at all. Some that were pretty close to that. But the reason we test for friability is because in consumables, there is only one way to value consumables. It is not the price you buy it for. You can't compare one disc of one companies to another companies and see which one costs less and say that's the one I wanna go with because it doesn't matter. How long can you use it for? How much cutting will it do? It is the only way to measure consumables, whether it's a router bit or a saw bit, like how many board feet will it cut? If I've got a $50 router bit that will cut a thousand board feet and I have a $20 router bit that goes dull after 30 board feet, it's no question which one I buy. You buy the $50 one. The way that we measured the sandpaper was cost of grams removed. So we did five five minute interval tests. We weighed them before and after each test. And then we took the cost of that disc divided by the total grams removed and we came up with a winner that way. So let's get into the test. We're gonna get through every single one starting from bottom to top. And then we're gonna talk about the results, talk about some outliers and talk about, you know, why we would throw a couple of these results out just because you know it was so cheap, but it still didn't remove a lot of material, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna talk about that after we get through the results. So let's get started with number 19, the worst of the bunch, Makita. Makita, which is common in big box stores, did the worst by removing four grams the whole test. It's cheap at 50 cents a disc, but it costs 12.54 cents to remove a gram of material, which is so much more than anything else in this test. And again, we spot checked the best, the worst, and a few other random ones to make sure we we're getting accurate results. And we double checked this because we didn't believe it. Really, Makita, absolute garbage. 
never buy this. Let's go on to number 18. Number 18 was Wonderweave, or I think it's sometimes called Pronet. This is not one we tested last time, but it was highly requested in the comments. I think it's really popular with turners, so woodworkers think that maybe it's a good one, but it did terribly. It's cheap, it's 50 cents a disc, and it cost 4.17 cents per gram removed. Number 17 is Norton Pro Sand Air. This is one of the attempts at a mesh disc before Merca had lost their patent. Uh, did pretty good middle of the road for grams removed at 45 grams. It's the first ceramic based sandpaper in our test. But the problem with this is it's so expensive at $1.80 per disc. So it came in at four cents per gram removed. Number 16 is Festool Rubin II. We did not test all the Festool papers in our last test and we got a lot of heat in the comments. So I tested everything Festool makes during this test. Festool Rubin II is an expensive paper at $1.40 per disc. Did again, middle of the road uh, for grams removed at 45 grams at a cost of 3.1 cents per grams removed. Coming in at number 15, another big box super hitter, Gator Resin. I believe it's Walmart's brand. Only removed 13 grams during the entire test. Very cheap at 40 cents per disc and cost about 3.07 cents per gram removed. Coming in at number 14, Klingspore PS29. Another middle of the road performer for grams removed, but at a cost of $1.29, it costs three cents per gram removed at 43 grams for the whole test. Unlucky number 13, Festool Granite Net. Festool has two lines of granite. We tested both, one is a net and one is a disc. This one costs $1.14 per disc. It removed 38 grams during the whole test, so kind of lower middle of the pack, at a cost of three cents per gram removed. Coming in at number 12, Festool Granite, the disc version, at $1.60 per disc, and this is interesting in this test, you'll find a lot of times the mesh is always cheaper than the discs, which is also the case. Removed 56 grams in the test, so kind of middle higher end of the pack, at 2.86 cents per disc. Coming in at number 11, Diablo Sand Net. Now this is one of the ones that was definitely reformulated since our last test, they added ceramic to it. Diablo Sand Net removed 64 grams of material during the whole test at a cost of 2.36 cents per gram. Coming in at number 10, one of the top performers in grams removed, just about tied with the original Cubitron at 76 grams during the test. Only problem is these are very expensive at $1.70 per disc and costs 2.24 cents per gram removed. Coming in at number nine, another big box store brand. Not the worst performer, but very cheap at 65 cents. 30 total grams removed during the competition at 1.96 cents per gram removed. Coming in at number eight, Shopsmith G2 Tech. Middle of the road with 39 total grams removed at a cost of 78 cents per disc at a total cost of two cents per grams removed. Coming in at number seven at 46 cents per disc, third worst performer in grams removed at 23 grams, but because it was so cheap, it was able to eke out a number seven spot at 1.99 cents per gram removed. Coming in at number six, one that has definitely been reformatted since our last test, Bosch. Bosch like barely cut in the last test at all. It still did very terribly in total grams removed at 30 grams, not the worst, but I think fourth worst. But because it's so cheap at 59 cents per disc, it came in at 1.96 cents per gram removed. And again, we're gonna talk about why we would throw some of these out after we talk about the next, the top five. We're getting into the top five here, the winners. Number five, Merca Abernet, the original patent holder for the net mesh disc at 80 cents a disc. 44 grams removed at 1.82 cents per grams removed. Coming in at number four, Merca Autonet, a very inexpensive disc at 53 cents per disc, removing 37 grams during the test at a total cost of 1.42 cents per disc. Coming in at number three, Klingspore PS77. Again, a very expensive disc at 53 cents, removing 40 grams during the test at 1.33 cents per gram removed. Coming in at number two, the winner from our last test and one of my favorite sandpapers for the last year since we did that test, 3M Cubitron removing 74 grams, 34 more than the number three spot, at a cost of 1.14 cents per gram removed. Now let's get into number one. These numbers are gonna blow you away. Coming in at number one is this. Would you believe if you saw this, that this could put up the numbers that it did? During the test, in its 25th interval, so after five five minute intervals, this still removed more material than almost every other paper in the test did in its first round. 
During the whole test, it removed 114 grams. That's 40 grams more than the number two and number three spot. That is unreal. I mean, it has like half the grid of anything else. So I'm not sure why it did so well, but this is the new 3M extract. It's their Cubitron blend, the, their proprietary ceramic blend that's in the original Cubitron that got the number two spot. And they designed this insane like herringbone pattern sandpaper. It's unbelievable. And the craziest part about it, it only costs 41 cents per disc. It's like half the price of the Cubitron. Whereas the number two spot was 1.14 cents to, per gram removed. This was a third of a cent. Like this is gonna revolutionize the sandpaper again. And let me stress that these are not sponsored videos. We paid for this test. We paid for all 19 of these different sandpaper brands. I can't believe this. This is like unreal how good this sandpaper is. So let's talk a little bit more about the data. Let's talk about why we would throw out some of those in the upper mid-level. And let's talk about why it's important to look at data like this. So every time we do a test like this, I feel like I learn so much. And I went through the comments of the last test and we bought every single one that somebody requested us test. And the thing that I have learned in this test is that mesh is the wave of the future. I mean, obviously 3M has come up with something so special. My theory is that because it's so open and there's these massive spaces without grit, it really reduces clogging and it allows it to stay much, much cooler when it's sandy. That's my personal theory. I don't know if that's true, but I think that that's part of why it cuts so well because heat is the enemy of sharpness. So if this stays cooler, it's gonna retain its grain and continue to cut really well. But to do 40 grams more than the number two and number three is just insane. If you look at the number two, Cubitron, partly because it's inexpensive at like 81 cents a disc, but it also has a ton of holes in it. So it mimics mesh. This would fit on any sander. Phenomenal value in sandpaper. I've been using this. And when I started using it, I was blown away by how it cuts. So now that this is available, this is what I'm gonna probably switch to. Pretty incredible. Cubitron and Norton Mesh were so close. Cubitron was 74 grams, this was 76 grams. So these were basically tied as far as grams removed, but this Norton Mesh is very expensive. I think at a buck 71 per disc. So that's why we look at things like this. So let's look at a chart here. This is cost per grams and total grams removed. Now this chart is ordered in cost per grams removed. So from left to right, that's the order of the test. And you can see that you'd probably wanna to toss out like the number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spot if you're a person who likes getting stuff done. The only reason they were able to sort of be good on this metric is because we're comparing the cost towards the amount removed, but they removed so little compared to some of the other ones and were so, so cheap that they were able to sort of sneak into the top of the test. So. If you got all the time in the world, nothing wrong with any of those, like the Merca, Shopsmith, Klingspore. You know, they're good sandpapers and they're gonna be they're gonna be just average. If you wanna get stuff done though, for a fair price, you gotta go with the 3M Cubitron. And if that's not readily available, certainly the Norton Mesh, Diablo Sandnet, and the Festool Granite are gonna be good papers. Now, one of the things that Festool has always done well is have proprietary consumables, and that's where that Festool Granite comes in, but that's why mesh is such a game changer because you know something like the 3M Extract, that's gonna fit on any sander, including any Festool sander you have, so there's no reason to buy that super expensive Festool paper, and that's why they have those proprietary hole patterns is they want you to buy their consumables, you know, it's part of how they keep the cost of their power tools down because they know they're gonna get you in the long run as you're buying sandpaper. But again, still removed a decent amount of materials, you know, in the mid 50s there. To me, as somebody who really dislikes sanding, this is the chart I look at, cost per grams removed. And that is what is important to me because I wanna find a sandpaper that removes a ton of material for a cheap price. And to me, after doing this test, I'm so blown away by this festival extract. Like I said, I'm gonna link that down in the pinned comment. Highly suggest you check it out. Mike is one of the only guys, the person who I linked there, who will split up packs. So he'll sell small packs if you just wanna test it. The crazy thing is if you look at the five minute interval chart, this is why friability matters so much and this is why a test like this matters so much. Cause you know, if you look at like a paper, like the Gator or the Bosch or the DeWalt, they just completely fail after 10 minutes, they're just garbage. They're not working anymore. And yeah, they removed a little bit of material in their first round, so that helped their total go up. 
But if you look at like the extract, in its fifth five minute interval, it removed 19 grams of material. The only ones that even did better than that in the first five minutes were the Diablo Sand Net and the Norton Mesh Power. The 3M Cubitron came close and the Festool Granite came close in their first five minutes to the last five minutes of the extract. I mean, that is just absolutely insane. So I think this chart is very telling because this is how you can see friability. Again, these will be on my website as well. And then lastly, if you want to just see them ranked in total grams removed from number one, I'll, I'll list the quickly the top five. It was the 3M Cubitron Mesh, Norton Mesh Power, 3M Cubitron, Diablo Sandnet, and then the Festool Granite. So if, you, if cost is of no object to you, you can buy based on that. If you look at the bottom five, Makita, the Wonder Weave Pronet, the Gator Red Resin, Sun Gold Abrasives. I think Sun Gold's like really popular on Amazon. And then the DeWalt and Bosch were all at the very bottom for grams removed. So I, I think this test is absolutely telling. Took us four days to do and was eye-opening, but it was so cool to see that since our last test that really, I don't know, that's probably not the reason the industry's changing. I think that the technology is getting better. And I really think that, you know, if you look at the top four here, they all have ceramic in them. Ceramic is the future of sandpaper. So make sure your sandpaper has ceramic. If you're not gonna go buy the extract or the Cubitron or the Norton Mesh, really you should value your time more than the actual retail cost of something because it really does make a difference to do something based on cost per grams removed rather than just retail cost, because it's how much can I get done in what amount of time? And I think that's really important. So guys, if you wanna support us doing more things like this, I would really appreciate if you head over to the Cats Moses store and check out the tools we have over there. Uh, we actually have a bunch coming out here in a little bit and some good, exciting announcements, which I'm really excited about. So guys, Thank you for watching. Uh, the 3M Extract and Cubitron will be linked down below, uh, as well as all the data uh, over on my website, which will be published in a blog. Guys, stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.